doing that one. Yeah, yeah. He said he enjoys it. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, doing better when it warms up. Oh, yeah, you know. You know? Unless you're a fan, I suppose you could be. He's a minority, I think. But. The only thing I'm looking forward to about. The only thing I'm not looking forward to is that walk in from the park. He says you like Chris. Oh, and then the walk back out. And the walk back out, yeah. Walk back out would be worse. Yeah. There's a car would be worse. Yeah. Where is that in Cedar Falls? Yeah, they, it was supposed to be at the end of the month, but they rescheduled it. We're going to go photos just for archives I haven't been here so long. I very rarely see Yeah. I don't have any photos. I don't know if I was seated like this. Oh, really? We usually have a good area back up that was worth it. No reason to do it. I'd like to welcome everyone to this week's uh, UNI press conference. A uh, couple of items here just to start out with. Uh, the Panther Scholarship Club had a record-breaking year uh, this year. Contributions to the PSC in 2017 uh, allowed for the fundraising goal to be reached with a total of 1,695 donors and a cash record of $1.52 million during the 2017 year. The record is a 12% increase over the previous high set in 2015 and an increase of 14% from last year's totals. It was also a record total of cash and gift in kind of $2,014,141 raised and a record new PSC members of 208 for the year. So a fantastic year for the PSC. Uh, we'd like to thank donors and friends of UNI Athletics for making that possible as well as the PSC staff of Nathan Christensen, Chelsea Zerbach, and Samantha Cook for all of their efforts and we look forward to setting more more marks and more records in 2018. This Saturday is our Women at Play event that's going to be held at the Waterloo Center for the Arts from 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, Women at Play is an annual celebration of women's athletics by UNI. The night will include a silent auction, uh, social, heavy, heavy hors d'oeuvres from hy V, live auction and a specialty game included. This year's event will be celebrating 25 years of uh, women's athletics in the Missouri Valley Conference to celebrate the milestone We'll have a panel of guests, including MVC Senior Associate Commissioner Patty Viverito, Head UNI Volleyball Coach Bobby Peterson, Head UNI Women's Basketball Coach Tanya Warren, and former volleyball player and UNI Hall of Famer Ellie Blankenship Reagan. They will highlight the events of the entertainment. UNI will also honor a pair of student athletes, uh, Kelsey Hansen from Women's Soccer and Molly Lembazeter of Swimming and Diving, who are receiving the 2017-18 Pat Allen Women at Play Scholarship. Uh, to sign up, Go to unipanthers.com slash WAP or call 319-273-2471. We look forward to having a great crowd Saturday night at the Waterloo Center for the Arts for the Women at Play event. First up today for our coaches is assistant coach uh, KK Armstrong for women's basketball. Panthers scored a pair of home wins over Evansville and Indiana State. They will travel to Drake Friday for a 7 p.m. tip at the Knapp Center. First up is KK Armstrong. Hey, uh, Tanya made me come in here and do this today. Um, so uh, <laughs> I thought our girls played really well at home this weekend. Um, we did a lot of good things defensively. I also thought um, we had a great gritty win against Indiana State. Um, we made some baskets late in the game. Ellie Blankenship hit a late shot um, that got us up one. Um, then we just had some key defensive stops too as well. Um, I also thought against Evansville, our bench, they showed up. Um, and we've been looking to um, get some points off our bench because that's a big key. I'm um, obviously having uh, Carly Rucker come off the bench. Um, I think she was almost in double digits, if not. Um, so that's also going to be something key going into this Drake win, or excuse me, going into play Drake um, and kind of take advantage of what we have coming off the bench. Um, they're a team that scores a lot of points, um, so we have to be there defensively, and I think carrying over what we did defensively um, this weekend is going to be, again, key going into what, when we play Drake Friday. Um, do you guys have any questions? You know, from looking at Drake, you know, how much are they maybe similar to, say, last year's team, or maybe what kind of differences they might have, say, without Lizzie Wendell or Kaylin Engel still there? 
Um, they they look a little bit different, but they're doing a lot of the same things offensively. Um, they have a lot of people stepping up, um, at least shooting the ball. I think they're shooting almost 60% from the floor, 40% from the three. Um, so you're going to have to kind of limit some touches with some of those starters. Um, Becca Hittner is a key person for them. She's scoring on all in all facets, she's shooting the three well. Um, she's doing great in the paint too as well, so that's somebody we're gonna have to stop. And then they have great bench play too. I mean, they have uh, Paige Griner coming off the bench shooting almost 78% from three. Um, so they have a lot of good shooters and that's kind of what they we had involved with last year too as well. Especially coming off a pretty good week this last week, how impressed have you and the rest of the coaches been with Megan Moss this season? Megan's always a player that She's, she's inspiring to me. Um, she's a player that plays hard on both ends. Um, she really gets the game, too, both offensively and defensively. Um, she plays hard for us, and her almost averaging a double-double um, is, is awesome, and that's something that we do need against Drake. Um, obviously, kind of finishing there with the defensive rebounds and kind of limiting their second-chance opportunities, too, as well. So we'll look Megan for Megan as a key player, too. Against a team as high-powered as Drake, do you look to... Um maybe find some ways to create some additional offense for yourself or do you maybe double down on, on the defense? Yeah, I think one big thing is that it's something that you got to do against them is push and transition because they set up that zone. Um, so we're going to be looking to get some points in transition, some easy baskets hopefully. Um, I know that's going to be tough to come by, easy baskets against Drake. Um, but also too, we're going to have to do some different things offensively. We're going to have to mix it up against that zone. Um, and again, like I said, we're going to have to have people come off the bench and produce too as well. Um, maybe some players that we haven't seen produce so much. Um, I hope that we have some to step up um, this game Friday. You talked about how different or similar Drake is to what the team they were last year. You had some great games with them. How, just in your thought, how different, better, similar is this UNI team going to Drake this year? I think we're a young team. Um, last year we had some veterans that were able to step up uh, offensively for us. So that's one thing that we're really kind of beating into our girls is that you all are going to have an opportunity. Everybody's going to have an opportunity to play. It's those that are going to produce and show up that are going to stay in the game and be in the game towards the end, too. Um, again, we've always been good against them defensively with matchups. Um, we've always switched it up and thrown different things at them, too. Um, so that's also going to be key in having everyone bought in. Again, that's something that's easier with the veteran team, um, and you don't run into as many mistakes um, with kind of a, a an, I guess, young team in that aspect, too, as well. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, KK. Uh, next up, you and I swimming and diving, and head coach Nick Lakin. Panthers picked up wins over Loris and Iowa Central, and then the Panthers honored their seniors uh, against Iowa State on Saturday. Panthers will travel to Illinois State on Friday and Western Illinois on Saturday. With a uh, recap of the week and preview is head coach Nick Lakin. All right, uh, so uh, on Friday we got started uh, against Iowa Central and Loris uh, provided us an opportunity to move some people around and in preparation for Saturday in the next couple weeks. Um, had uh, Annika get her first collegiate win in the 200 free, Emma in the 1,000 free, uh, won both divings um, and found some key pieces that we think we can use this weekend. Um, and then Saturday we had the opportunity to um, honor the senior class that we've had. Um, they're going to leave you and I with the most dual wins out of any class that's ever been here, and they've really kind of changed kind of the face of the program. So a lot of uh, team records, MVC records, um, and just really good leaders and all great students that will move on to grad school and dental school and all sorts of other uh, great opportunities here in the next year. So. Um, yeah, Iowa State uh, went pretty well for the most part, uh, won the 400 free relay. Uh, Molly Lembezeter had uh, two wins in the 50 free and 100 free, uh, and then Katie uh, Taylor won three events as well. So. well. Kind of how important is the competition you have this week with Illinois State and Western Illinois? Yeah, actually, uh, Illinois State is the only uh, MVC meet we'll have, so it'll be good to get a look at the team that finished right behind us in the conference last year. Um, there will be some great matchups in some of the distance events um, and then a couple of the relays that will be uh, a really good test for us to kind of gauge where we're at.
All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Next up, uh, UNI Track and Field head coach Dave Paulson. Panthers won 23 of 30 events at the uh, Panther Open in the Unidome this past weekend. They will travel to Brookings, South Dakota for a meet this Saturday. Next up is head coach Dave Paulson. Uh, so we opened up the week, uh, this the season uh, at Iowa State in D December. We took a handful of kids over there uh, and, and had a really good meet there. We built on that this weekend. We had the whole meets, uh, the whole team going at this meet, our home home competition to open up. Uh, you know, coming off of a Christmas break, it's it's one of those things where rare sports where you send the you send the student athletes home for about three weeks and then they come back and you really hope they did what they were supposed to do. And so that first meet really gives you a uh, a true look at what they did over break to make sure everyone did what they're supposed to, and I was really happy with what I saw uh, so far. So a lot of kids ran a lot of off events, and so you know if you're middle distance running, you might have ran down or ran up. Uh, same thing as a long sprinter, short sprinter, you might do a little bit of a different event, just kind of get the, the feet wet going on the season. Uh, but we had some good performances overall. Uh, Xavier Williams, who, who's a freshman All-American on the football team, a defensive back, he came out, uh, high jumped uh, two meters ten, which is right at just under seven feet, six ten and three quarters. Uh, actually leads the conference right now, uh, so that was exciting to see him, you know, come out for the first meet and get that done for us and, and be in position right away there on the high jump. Kate Patrick, a uh, sophomore from Madrid, uh, had a really good meet, uh, sitting second in the conference in the long jump. And those two guys right there, I mean, those are going to be performances that make a difference once we get into February because uh, in the last few years we haven't had jumpers up in the ranks to really start the season. We That's an area we need to try to improve on. And so to have a couple guys right there in the mix right off the bat, a uh, good place to start and improve on from there. Uh, and we had a host of 400 guys that ran the 200, did a really good job uh, there. So overall as a team, it was a really strong performance and uh, just looking forward to, to heading up to Brookings this weekend and get a chance to compete against some other schools, uh, the, the Dakota schools and a couple of really good junior college uh, programs up there as well. On the women's side, kind of echo the same sentiment, just uh, really good competitive effort across the board. Uh, Maddie Bell had a really good meet, uh, sophomore from Hudson. She ran, uh, she won the 60 and the 200 and then came back and ran on the 4x4. Uh, Diana Slight, a freshman from Boone, had a really good race in the 600. And Lauren Beauchamp uh, in the pole vault for us as a freshman uh, actually cleared 12 feet and then the, the, the pole came back and knocked the bar off and so they didn't give it to her, but she cleared it by about four inches. And so uh, she's sitting in a really good place. Um, even though it doesn't show up as a 12-foot clearance, uh, we definitely know she's got a lot more in the tank. And so uh, overall, we had a really good uh, weekend and just looking to, to build. And, you know, the message to the team is we get better every single week. And so our goal is to be a better team this week than we were last week and uh, just continue to build uh, to the pinnacle of the indoor season, which is the last week in February uh, in the Dome for the MEC Championships. Uh, any questions regarding track? All right. Go Panthers. Thank you, Dave. Next up, uh, you and I wrestling, head coach Doug Schwab. Panthers took third place at the Virginia Duels with victories over Kent State, Chattanooga, and Oklahoma. The Panthers will be back in action Sunday, 2 p.m. in Brookings against the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Next up, head coach Doug Schwab. Uh, first off, send condolences out to Gene Doyle and his family. Um, he passed away on Saturday, been battling for a while. Just want to make sure his family understands how much we appreciate everything that he did for our program, man. He was at everything. Um, but I can tell you his impact will last for a long, long time um, from everyone that he touched you know, on the wrestling mat, uh, on the football field, on the track. I know he was in the classroom too, so um, our community is going to miss him. Our program is going to miss him. Um, if you get a chance, make sure um, send your condolences to his family's way. So uh, we're going to miss him, but I uh, want to make sure that family understands it. Uh, and we appreciate everything that he did for our program and, and certainly going to miss seeing him. Um, so beyond that, let's see. We went to the Virginia Duels, yeah. Russell Four meets out there. Um, okay, performance. I mean, I'm going to be tough on our team because obviously we expect a, a great deal out of them. Um, Arizona State. You know, it's tough when you give up bonus points. You know, anytime it's really, really tough to win dual meets um, when you give up bonus points in multiple weights. Uh, you know, we were able to put ourselves back in the meet. 
a whole shot got a pin. Uh, Foster went four and on the weekend, got got a got a major decision for us, so we were able to put ourselves back in the meet. But um, you know, the matches that really we're supposed to win, we're winning right now, and the ones that maybe on paper or not, we're not winning. Um, so, you know, to really make some waves, you have to start winning some of those that maybe you're on paper you're not supposed to. Um, and that's what we're going to continue to work to do. Uh, I think we had, I'm trying to think of who all went foreign on the weekend. Max went four on the, oh, on the weekend. Um, actually beat two guys that had beat him before. Beat a, a, a guy who had been a national champion, which is, you know, I don't care if he was a national champion two years ago, three years ago, ten years ago. Um, it's still a big deal to beat a guy that was a that was a national champion. Um, he went four and on the weekend. Drew went four and on the weekend. Looked looked uh, really good. Got bonus points in three of his four matches. Um, who else did? That's I, I should I should know this. Yeah, and Albert. Sorry, Albert's consistent. He's steady. Man, he shows up every single time. Um, you know, so we had three of those guys go four and zero. Oh, a couple go three and one. Um, some guys are certainly rounded back into things. You know, I know Wagner went one and three on the weekend, but there's signs in every single match, though, that this guy's really getting close to breaking out. You know, in in scoring some good, some 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 really good offensive holds. Um, just got to be able to kind of. We talk about 420 seconds, so you know you can wrestle 60 seconds and 80 seconds, or you wrestle 20 seconds at a time. But we got to be able to put 420 together, and and that's what he's working on doing. He's getting better every time out. Um, Schwarm, Schwarm wrestled a couple, uh, uh, you know, good guys. Got to be able to get to a leg attack, and and he was able to do it kind of in Vegas. Um, but now we have to get back to it, guys. Guys are gonna start to adjust. I mean, that's kind of how college wrestling is. It's a uh, there's so much video out there. Guys are gonna up their game. We have to up our game too. Um, not too concerned about you know you have a couple losses, but then you have to be able to bounce back from that. And I know he will. Um, Albert went four and zero. Max went four and zero. I think. Good thing about uh, Logan Ryan is he's kind of rounding into shape right now. You know, he's kind of working himself back into it um, as he's out there, and he's looking better every time. Um, get to get him to a few more leg attacks, and, and I tell you what, then you start you start being able to beat some of the best guys in the country. Uh, but like how he's competing 65, someone's got to step up. I mean, that's <laughs> I mean that's really the the bottom line is somebody's got to kind of got to take a hold of it, and we we split matches, and in we did have some tough opponents in those weight classes. Um, but man, if we want to step up and be the guy somewhere, then then someone has to step up in those situations. Um, don't know. I don't know. I I wish it was a little bit more clear about where we're at in that weight class, um, but more consistency across the board. So I'm not sure who's going to wrestle on Saturday or Sunday. We'll have one of those guys ready to go. We'll take both of them. Um, 74, Luhan. You know the last match. Those are things that he can do with guys. I don't care who it is. Um, he can score a whole mess of points. And then pin guys and blow them out of the water. Um, I think situation where you know you can be up 2-0 after the first period with two and a half minutes of riding time, or you can be up 10 to two. And he was up 10 to two. And sometimes then guys throw that towel in. Um, wrestled the number one guy in the country again, uh, but there's certain things just from a discipline point of view with a stance that he's going to have to be able to do to beat a guy like that or beat the best guys. He's just going to have to be more disciplined, and that's just a choice you have to make um, when you step out there. And we're going to work on in practice, and you know we'll we'll have we'll have him continue to raise level. But I know I know what he's capable of doing. But when you're a head higher than a guy, it makes it pretty tough to be able to do those type of things. So got to work on that. Really like how Drew Foster's wrestling. Um, man, he's he's scoring a whole lot of points. He's scoring a whole lot of points, which is a good thing. Um, hog hog scraps battles every single time. Um, the match that he lost. I'll choose my words. I hopefully your officials don't watch this stuff. Um, but I think he pinned him at the end. You know, the great thing about Hochschlag is he'll keep wrestling through everything. Doesn't matter what position. And and it was kind of coming down to the end. And it looked like the match was kind of over. And he he turned back into the guy and put him right on his back. And he was flat as could be. And I think it it, it actually surprised the official a little bit um, that it happened. But man, one second is a pin. He he pinned him and. He missed it, but you know, I mean, I guess those things happen. But the great thing is, is he never stops wrestling. It doesn't matter what it is, what situation, what position. If there's a second left, he's still gonna keep working. And I tell you what, that's a that's a valuable lesson for all of our guys to learn. Uh, but love how he competes, and I thought Carter competed competed much better this weekend. Um, hit some really really good shots, and that's what we want to see. Change in direction, well, put a guy right down, 
Um, so there's certainly a lot of progress, um, but we're getting down to we're about eight weeks away from, you know, from our national tournament. So you know, it's time to start putting more of an edge on. You don't you don't need to have a fine edge right now because we're that far away. But it's starting to get that time where it's time to put more of that edge on. And we have four meets left. Um, we have a little training in between one of the weeks, and we're gonna we're gonna put that edge on these next few weeks. Um, look forward to South Dakota State. I know they have a great environment up there. Um, great arena. I know that they've got their fans excited about the sport. Um, I know that they get big crowds, and that's perfect. Man, love love being able to have where we go somewhere, and it's packed. I'd rather have that because I remember man, we went there a handful of years ago, and there wasn't many people there. I mean, you could you could count you could count the people that were there. So they've done a good job of building the program. Um, they're going to come out ready to scrap, and we're going to have to match that. We're going to have to match that energy. And not just match it, we're going to have to raise it. Um, that energy and fight and hustle. Um, but I know our guys look forward to it. I think we enjoy those environments. I mean, who doesn't Who doesn't enjoy that kind of environment, I mean, as a competitor? Um, so we look forward to being there on Sunday. I know it's about a five-hour drive. So uh, I mean, certainly would like to see some purple and gold up there. It would be, be a good thing, be a good thing to have a bunch of fans up there. I know it'll be a fun meet to watch. So. Um, other than that, I guess, any questions? After losing to Arizona State, you, you came back and put it on Oklahoma pretty good. How, yeah. how did that set with you on the way your guys came back at the Virginia Duels? I th it's important, man. That's a critical piece. Uh, you have to be able to respond <laughs> to adversity or a loss. I mean, that's just, to me, that's just part of it. That's part of what we're trying to teach our guys. If, if we can't respond, then we're not doing our job, and they're not doing their job either. Um, I mean, because we're going to get beat some. It's going to happen. You know, I mean, to me, that shows me a lot more than if we tuck our head. You know, and we got we probably got a little bit slow start in that meet, you know. Um, and then guys, guys, as we, we kind of went, we responded. There was a lot of battles in those matches. So i uh, obviously happy that we always finish that way. I think that's, that's what we talk about. We talk about how do you move forward. We talk about how do you handle adversity. We talk about it being an opportunity. So if our team responded to anything different, then... This coach would probably be singing a little different tune up here um, about things, but it, you know it was a little it's a little different setup. You know we we had like a five hour weigh in, and then we had like four or five hours again. So you know sometimes it's not always ideal, but it's the same for both teams. Um, so our guys, you know, oh, you know I'm not used to this. I'm not used to having this time. Well, it, it's the same for everybody. You still have to get yourself ready, and you plan on being in the finals of a national tournament. Uh, you're going to weigh in Saturday morning, and you're going to have to wait till that night. So you have to learn how to kind of um, manage that energy, manage those nerves, manage that situation. And so actually, it was it was good for us to be able to kind of have that, have that breaks in between and and those things. But always better to finish with an odd number. I can tell you that. Always better. Um, we got like I said, we got four meets. We got out South Dakota this week, and uh, certainly looking forward to that opportunity. How important is this stretch with these? You got the dual meets four right in a row. Number of them are Big Twelve duels. Just how how do you look at that? I mean, good teams. I mean, we got you know three highly ranked teams. Iowa State. They're wrestling much better. I mean, they they had a good they had a good event out there. Um, that's you know, and that's an emotional meet. But I think for us, it's like being consistent though, being able to get up every time. Um, you know, so we're we're not doing this. And can we have ten guys get up at one time? Uh, you know, I think that's for me. That's kind of like I said trying to put an edge on a guy right now. You know, we got one meet. We got one meet a week. We've we've definitely put it on them, though. I mean, we've traveled. We've traveled quite a bit. Um, we went to, you know, three big time events where we've had multiple multiple weigh-ins, um, multiple matches. Um, now, can we get ourselves focused and ready for one match and really be ramped up and ready? Uh, you know, that's kind of what I want to see. Can we raise our level? Because a couple of these teams on paper are. I guess are ranked ahead of us. Oklahoma State down there is ranked ahead of us. Missouri coming in is ranked ahead of us. You know, how do we respond to that? Are we able to kind of raise our level? And that's that's really what I want to see because I kind of talked before. I said we're beating guys. You know, on paper we should beat. We got to start beating those guys that we're not supposed to beat. <laughs> it's time to do that. It's time to really solidify that. Okay, we are we are one of the we are one of the premier teams in the country. And that's the only way you do it. You don't do it by unless you're the number one guy in the country and you're beating everybody you're supposed to beat. But we're not there right now. Um, but I, I look forward to getting some really good training in um, these next few weeks. You know, we'll have next week off, so we'll be able to get some really good training in. 
Uh, but I'm looking to see if guys put an edge on. You know, we've we've kind of stayed very steady. Now it's time to start to make that climb. Um, Obviously, Cody Caldwell's on the other side of the yep. mat. You know, what kind of pleasure do you take maybe in seeing former Panthers like that go out in the coaching world, work with the next classes of wrestlers, and kind of find success as quickly as he has? No, nah, I mean it's that's what you want for your guys. I mean, I know he wanted a coach, and that's a great, incredible opportunity for him. You know, a couple years out to be an assistant coach in a Big 12 team. Um, I, I love it. I mean, because to me, that's it's still he's still part of the UNI wrestling family. I don't care where guys go. I mean, that's the thing is like, you can have guys all over the country. Hopefully, we do, man. Hopefully, 10 years from now, I get guys that wrestled for me, and they're everywhere around the country. You know, and maybe they're taking a little piece of what, what we put into them and they're using it with their guys. I mean, to me, that's, that's what you want. You know, I mean, I want guys to grow and get better and, and have those opportunities. So I'm happy for him. I know he's doing a great job there. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's showing in their team, their team, their team's competing very well. Um, but man, that's what I want for, for those guys. So I, it's not like he knows, he knows when we compete, man, I want to whoop his tail. I want to whoop his team's tail. Is after that, then we're, then we're done with it, you know, and then, then you move on and, and uh, that's to me, that's how wrestling should be. I mean, that's kind of the great thing about the sport is you can go battle tooth and nail and you can fight and almost almost literally fight one another. And then you can walk off and you have the utmost respect for each other. I mean, nothing can change what those five years Cody put in our program. I mean, nothing can change that. Um, respect and love him and, and look forward to seeing him this weekend. So um, like I said, hopefully our guys, hopefully there'll be you and I guys all over, all over throughout the country. And they still got a little piece of piece of purple and gold in them, no matter where they go. As far as that Steelers game, man, I can't I can't not say something about that Steelers game. Mm -hmm. I can't. What happened? Did you watch the game? Yeah. Why'd they kick it on sides? Dude, I, they need they need to give me the call on that one. <laughs> the, the, phone. the only thing I'll say is like, the, the, what's what's upsetting? What's upsetting is, and, and I'm a coach, so I don't like I, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a, I'm a a football coach and I hate second guessing guys but man oh man there was how they managed the game was good lord almighty it was a tough to handle um you know even my eight-year-old was like what's going on why are they doing that um so that was that was tough to deal with because I think I think they could have scored as many points as they wanted you know some of the play calling I think got in the way of that but the one thing I'll say is they never gave up though I mean you, you got to at least give them that they there was plenty of opportunities where they they could have kind of like nah we're going to cash it in, and they didn't do that. And then that's really what they did all year. Hopefully they bring the, the, the majority of those guys back. Obviously got to get their defense better, but, I mean, hopefully Big Ben and Bell and all those guys come back because they have an incredible offense. But, man, you got to win in the postseason, though. That's kind of the name of the game. So not going to lie and say I'm not disappointed a little bit. I didn't shed any tears this time. My son did that for me, so that's all right. But you know what? I'm probably going to be an NFC guy now. Not sure which NFC way to go. I got a few friends that are that are Eagles fans. I know they've had a lot of heartache. I know a lot of Vikings fans have had a lot of heartache throughout the years. So um, I know I can't cheer. I, I know I can't cheer for the Jaguars. No way. I'll never cheer for that team, and I'll never cheer for the Patriots either. So I'm, I'm going somewhere with the NFC. But yeah, my my other boy. So his second favorite team is the Jaguars. He's a Patriots fan, but his second favorite team. So he tried cheering for the Jaguars. I said, you can't cheer for your second favorite team. You got to go downstairs if that happens. So he went downstairs for a while, but I don't know. Other than that, hopefully some fans can make it up to Brookings. Um, it'll be a fun meet from atmosphere. I know if you can't make it up there, um, it'll be up on Flow Wrestling. So um, appreciate the support and go Panthers. Thank you, Doug. Uh, I have a pretty good idea who you should cheer for in that uh, <laughs> NFC Championship game on Sunday. <clears throat> Thank you for coming out. Have a great week. Go Panthers. Purple and yellow. Skull. You got to stay with the purple and gold. It's purple and gold.